Hey, what's up YouTube? So yesterday I just installed a wideband O2 sensor on the truck. Now the reason I installed this is because I wanted more free range when I go and get the truck tuned. Uh, stock, it comes with narrowband sensors and I mean other than idling and just cruising, there's really nothing else you could tune with them. It is a lot safer to tune with a wideband rather than the stock O2 sensors just because you can actually keep track of your air to fuel ratio under all conditions and it's all live and everything so that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to do it. Now I didn't really film while I was installing the wideband just because I thought it was kind of boring. So what I did instead is I just ran the truck with open headers to go get it welded up and all that. So uh, here's the footage for that. leave it on in case we get pulled over too. with us whenever we went to uh Accelerate with that converter. <laughs>
really sounds like ass on the outside, but I'm sure it's not that bad. It's pretty loud though. <laughs> so coming off the white pipe over here on this side of the screen, that's where the driver's side of the truck is. So this is the only spot I could put the wideband sensor. Um, you're supposed to have it at at least a 10 degree angle, and you can see that's at least a 10 degree angle. Mainly because you want to make sure that if there's any condensation on the sensor, just from the exhaust, that it drains and dries out whenever you're done using it. And just so it doesn't ruin the sensor. And it's at least 10 degrees, and if I were to put it uh, anywhere on this side, mainly because of the drive shaft and the lack of room underneath the transmission I chose this area. Now it worked perfect just because this wire runs all the way up to the passenger side of the truck. So right here is the connector for the wideband. I don't know if you can see this very well because it's just the lighting's kind of trash but it runs all the way up under the firewall directly to the wideband so there's no obstructions um, it was really easy to install this, honestly, you just put it up there, I zip tied it up to the dipstick for the tranny, and it's not going to go anywhere. Now I ran it across, other than these nasty wires right here, I ran it across over here to the main fuse box. So unfortunately, this is the only switch to power I could find, it's number 43 on the fuse box. It really doesn't matter which other one there is, if there is any other switch power, but number 43 on the fuse box is switch power for the gauge. I wish I could have found any switch power inside this fuse box right in here just because that would have been a lot easier to run everything and I had to drill a hole through the firewall just to let the wires go through. Alright so now excuse all the sand you know I like to go to the beach and stuff I try to keep the truck washed but the interior I kind of just kind of neglect a little bit but here's the gauge and I know what you're thinking why isn't it mounted? Well, the main reason is because since I couldn't hook it up to this fuse box, I didn't have enough wire. And I wanted it to be done, and I also wanted to make sure this was working. So we just went ahead and wired it through to the other fuse box. And uh, I need to go order some new wire, and then I also need to order a mount. Uh, just because I didn't know where I could put it, I didn't get a mount for it just yet. So in reality, I am thinking about not even adding the mount, just because, I mean, if I put my foot down, can see perfectly right on this gauge so I may not even just do the mount no I'm just kidding so I do plan on putting the mount somewhere in this area it's gonna be out of the way I don't plan on putting it up here at all just because I feel like I don't feel like drilling into the dash up here I don't want a a pillar gauge mount either I just don't really like how those look so I think I'm just gonna go with a single mount right down here out of the way it's not gonna hit anyone's knees just because it's in the middle and it's going to be kind of subtle. Now I do have the truck running and as you notice it's not a regular air to fuel ratio. I do actually have it in lambda. One is stoic. Anything under that is rich. And anything above that is lean. Now the reason I have it in lambda right now is because I don't know it's easier to read for me and also depending on which type of fuel I use sometimes I run E85, sometimes I run 93 octane. It doesn't really matter it's going to read lambda and it's going to read that one is stoic if it's calibrated correctly. Now it's really easy if you wanted to switch it over to air to fuel ratio, AFR. So all you do is click mode and select and then now you're running an air to fuel ratio and it's going to read as that. And what I forgot to mention earlier in the video too is that this is a CAN bus system so what that means is I have an adapter that comes from the gauge to the OBD2 port and then I'm able to connect HP tuners directly to the OBD2 port with that adapter and read live data logging of the wideband sensor and this is great obviously for tuning and that's the reason why I chose this gauge so there you go I mean now the truck has the wideband sensor uh, what I'm gonna be doing now is uh, having the truck retuned uh, just to get the parameters correct and it doesn't look like it's too far off as far as the tuning um, when I floor it it doesn't look too rich doesn't look too lean 
so it looks all good um, but you know it's easier for the tuner to go check everything out and make sure everything is finely tuned with the wideband and so that's exactly what I'm gonna do it may help with drivability but we'll see but mainly I mean right now I don't necessarily need to have a wideband I mean I've had the truck cammed and I had it have headers and all that and tuned for the past three years and it's still running fine but if you really want to fine tune it and make sure it's getting tuned safe and if you are gonna venture off and try to tune it yourself it's really good to see exactly how your engine is running because again you don't want it to run too rich or too lean you'd rather want it to run rich than lean but you want it to run just right basically and to make sure everything's safe and obviously if you're going to be boosting the vehicle as well make sure you run a wideband that's when it's more of a necessity to make sure your air fuel ratios are correct i can't even say that right but yeah so if you plan on boosting it definitely put in a wideband you basically have to put in a wideband um, no one's going to really tune it without one if it's boosted so there you go the truck now has a wideband and i'm going to be mounting it and not be on the floorboard anymore and i'm going to get the truck retuned again and I'm also going to uh, do some videos as far as the new converter I have. I haven't done that yet. I do have videos on the older converter, but this one is much bigger. So I'll be doing more videos on that as far as gas mileage, drivability, and all that. Just because it is another basically 1,000 RPM higher than the old converter I had. So that'll be a good video to watch as well. So I'll see you on the next video.